like to welcome everyone here at Nancy's Creek United Methodist Church. And <clears throat> God is so good to us. It's a beautiful day outside, and I thank God for all he does. And But I want to welcome all the ones that are in the pew today and welcome all the ones that are online. The title of the sermon today is going to be Born Again. Born Again. We all talk about being born again, and it's a powerful thing uh, from the Word of God, but we need to put it in context as what the Bible says about being born again. So let's start with prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Scholar, if you will, give us our scripture for today, please. Chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. The word of God for the people of God. It was fairly lengthy, but the thing is, this is the word of God. The word of God is a powerful, a powerful witness unto all of us, and to Listen to the word of God builds our faith and allows us to grow in the things of God. And we need to understand and realize who we are in God. And how do we get there unless we know what the word of God is saying to us? I want to go back and look at verse 3 one more time. Now this is John 3, 3. There's a big John in the New Testament. It said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, which means it's very important. 
Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's powerful there. It tells us of something that needs to take place. The term as we use it today, born again for conversion, you know you must say, I've been born again to Christians for them to understand what's happened to you. Who are you? I'm, I'm born again. I'm, I'm a born again Christian. I, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I went down to the altar and, and I know that God has blessed me and God has saved me and I have been born again. Yes, I'm born again. Glory to God. I'm born again. Have you been born again? Using that term in that way did not start with the Bible. Born again is not mentioned in the synopsis gospels at all. John is the only one that mentions it. The only time it's mentioned elsewhere in, in the Bible is in 1 Peter. And when Peter mentions it, it is completely different Greek word that it uses for born again. Conversion. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke doesn't even mention it at all. Born again didn't become popular as it was uh, identified in uh, conversion until the Reformation when Martin Luther used the term in 96 in a, in a thesis that he wrote. And we're introduced to justification by faith. This term born again become popular within the context of conversion where people come down to the altar and they give their life to Christ, and they walk back and say, I have been born again. That's thousands of years after Nicodemus's conversation with Jesus. Those thousands of years, you didn't see or hear anything referencing being born again. But now it's so popular within the church for the Christian people to say, I've been born again. You know, another terminology is, uh, I've been saved. God has saved my life. What does it really mean to be born again? I'm not talking about Christian colloquialism, which was evolved out of the Reformation, where you say that I'm a born again Christian. Are you a born again Christian? Oh, yeah, I'm born again. I've been, I've been saved by the blood. I've been washed in the blood. I've been made white as snow by the blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice that he made. Jesus gave it all. The Bible said, as we uh, read in verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Glory be to God. I just want us to understand that the conversation that happened between Jesus and Nicodemus was not a conversation between Jesus and a sinner. Nicodemus is a religious man of the Sanhedrin court who had worshipped Jehovah all of his life. He is a Pharisee of the highest order of religiosity of that time. He is a Jew who stands strong in the, in the religion of that time. But he has perceived the truth here as Jesus gives him a word that uh, something that he has not looked at or saw before, and now he, Nicodemus has a problem because he can't understand what Jesus is telling him. 
What is this? You must be born again. What, what are we talking about? We want to talk the truth. We want to reveal to us, and we want to reach our destiny, the purpose in our life, and we want to do it most of the time without creating conflict because we're happy in the place that we're in, and we don't want to change so that somebody else might think bad about us. But I want you to know something. If you're going to be a child of God, there's going to be people who are going to be upset with you. There's going to be people who are going to disagree with you. There's going to be people who's going to have conflict with you because you can't be where you are now and not grow or move forward and be a child of God. You've got to grow. You've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. God wants you to know Nicodemus, as he, he was there having this conversation with Jesus, he was in awe because he knew that Jesus was a powerful man of God because of all of the things that Jesus had done. But now Jesus had given him a puzzle, and he didn't understand <clears throat> what he was going to have to do. We all like a soft place. We all like a comfortable place. We all want to be in the womb. We, we always want to be separated from everything else and live in our own little world and be happy where we are, be content, and not have anything shake us up. But if you're going to be a child of God, there's going to be something that shakes you up. And most of the time, it's the Word of God that shakes you up because you realize that you're not doing all the things that God had called you to do. I get along sometimes with people, and sometimes I don't, but I've had to walk away from a lot of friends because I couldn't be who I used to be. I couldn't laugh at the things that I used to laugh at. I couldn't stay in the same situation or go to the same places that I used to go to. I was not the same person anymore because I had had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. We all grow. We all grow. We have to realize that if we don't grow, we become stagnant. If we're not moving forward, then we're either standing still or backing up, and we need to continue to move forward in our life because people are depending on us to do something. A lot of people are looking at us as examples of Christians, as examples of what God has called us to be. We're supposed to be standing out and living our life as an example following Jesus Christ. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but maybe somebody online, but if, if it's you and you feel nervous in your seat about it, just look straight ahead. Nobody will pay any attention to you there. Anytime you, you more than uh, just at one specific part in your life, and you begin to read the scripture of Almighty God, it begins to reveal things to us. That's what the Word of God is. It's a living, breathing Word that reveals life to us. It says, For this is the day of rebuke and trouble for the children have come to birth, and there's not strength enough to deliver them. You have to be strong to be able to, to deliver a, a baby. I'll tell you the truth. I don't know how women do it. And I, I want you to know you have to be strong as you lay there with intense pain and they're telling you to push, push, push. And finally, there's one last push before the baby is born. And that's a time when all of it is coming together in the woman's life as she reveals birth for the first time. Real labor is hard. Thank God that God used the women to do it. And Nicodemus has a problem. He has received the truth. 
that contradicts the environment that he is uh, living in, the truth that creates a, a contradiction in his life. What I'm trying to tell you, and this is powerful, is you can't grow and stay. You can't grow and stay. Oh, I feel like talking. I feel like preaching. I feel like the Word of God is powerful within me today because I thank God for the, the Word of God that changes my life and allows me to move and grow closer and closer to Him. But you can't grow without finally being delivered if you're a baby. The baby is continually growing and growing and growing and finally there has to be a birth that takes place. And God wants us to know that we have to grow and grow in the Word of God. <clears throat> do you want to grow or do you want to stay? You are different. If you're a child of God, you're different than what the world is. Nicodemus said to Jesus, I perceive that thou art a rabbi sent from God. No man can do these things except God be with him. And Jesus said, ye must. Ye must. You can't stay where you at. You must. You know too much to go back to what you used to be and to do the things that you used to do because the word of God has revealed to you that you're different than you were. And as you grow in the word of God, you continue to change. Oh, y'all ain't ready for this word today, but God has it, and he has it available to you. You need to say, I know it. I know it. I know it. I, I used to not know what I know now, but now that I know what I know, I can never unknow what I know now. You can't ever unknow it. Once you learn it, once you see it, you can never not know it again. The Bible talks about sex and says to Adam that he knew his wife Eve. The word know is an intimate knowing. Once you know, you can never go back. Have you ever run into somebody that you know? Somebody that you known before I'm talking about in the biblical sense and you knew them and now all of a sudden you're there with somebody else and you're with somebody else and you're walking down in one of the local stores and you say uh, hi hi and you get a look from your wife or your spouse or whoever's with you there as you're just walking around because you know that you knew them. And it changes how you perceive things in your life when you know, because once you know, you can never unknow it again. But you know you can never unknow what you know. If experiencing a, a, a person, if experiencing a person or a relationship with a person you can never unknow. How in the world can you have an experience with God and think you can unknow it? When you have an experience with God, you can't drink your way out of it. You can't smoke your way out of it. You can't go to the club and get out of it. You can't hide anywhere because God's always with you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Once I know it, I know it, and I can't go back. Amen. I can't change who I am. Slap somebody and say, I know it. I'm not bothered by all the new religions. I'm not bothered by all the new ideas. I'm not barred, uh, bothered by all the things that the new people are bringing into the church because I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and powerful in my life, and I know that God has changed me. There's a change that took place in my life, and I can never go back to who I used to be. 
I cannot tell you how many people that I love that I had to walk away from. I even had to walk away from some of the people in my family because they kept doing the same things that they've always done. But I had to leave it behind. I had to leave them behind. Not because I think I'm so much better than anybody else. I had to leave them behind because I couldn't fellowship with them like I used to fellowship because we used to go places and do things that I can't go and do anymore. We all want to be where it's safe. We don't want to make nobody mad at us. We want to uh, be having a good time with one another and socialize with one another and never have anything to interfere with it. But the Bible says ye must, not you might or not you ought to or not you're eligible for it or not you could be. It said ye must be born again. Truth induced labor, that will make you change your life. You must. Once you've tasted, once you've touched, once you've known, once you've experienced, once you've had God in your life, you can never unknow it and you can never go back. Once you know him, once you know him, you can't go back. I don't know. What you going to do? This may mess up your job, or it may mess up part of your family, or may mess up you with your friends, but you need to know that I can't dumb down who I am and what I know to try to fit in anymore. I've got to be what God has called me to be, and he said to me to separate myself. That don't mean I can't be a witness. That don't mean that I can't be an example. That don't mean that I can't be a child of God living what God has called me to do so that people will be drawn to me by the Spirit of Almighty God. You must see that there are some of you that are doing things that shouldn't be done, but you're not thinking about what God has called you to do. God has called you to be a witness. God has called you to be a child. God has called you to be an example. There has a transformation taken place in your life. Truth brings about change. Truth brings about transformation. Truth will make you make decisions in your life that will change the direction that you're going in. The Bible says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Are you free? Are you free? You must be born again. Here's my problem. Here's my problem. Most of the time when you get ready to have a baby, you talk to the mother. You let me know about everything that you need to do or got to do. You're talking to the mother. Let me get my car. Let me pack your bag. Let me get everything ready. Come on, lady, let's get in the car. We got to go down to the hospital and we're going to have a baby. We talk to the mother. Jesus here is talking to the baby. He's talking to Nicodemus, and he says, you must be born again. What in the world would make the master physician now have a conversation with the baby? Come back next week, and we'll... (laughs) The only way I am at the mercy of the baby is if I'm losing the mother. And the mother is Israel. Mother Israel. Her purpose, 
she's getting weak and there needs to be a rebirth. There needs to be a transformation. And Jesus is speaking to the baby. The birth of a king, the birth of a nation. Jesus wants us to know that there's something in this verse that he's revealing to us that there has to be a birth that takes place. And if you read on down, it says that you have to be born of water and of spirit. When you're born through the flesh, he says, that which is born to the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So when you're born, you're born of the water. And when you're born again, you're born of the spirit. So when Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How do we... Be born again. The Bible says, If thou shalt believe in thy heart that Jesus Christ is the Christ, and shalt confess with thy mouth that he is Lord and Savior, not in those exact words, but that's what the Bible says, then you will, you will be saved. You will be born again. You're born of the Spirit. You cannot practice the traditions of the past anymore. <clears throat> Your traditions have to change. They have to evolve into the traditions of God. The post-traditions are what will keep you going. The energy of trying to keep Mama alive sometimes when the baby is being born is a fight within the hospital. So as the nation of Israel is fading, Nicodemus needs to understand that there's something that needs to take place in his life to change everything because he's a Jew. He's a powerful man of the church. He's a member of the Sanhedrin. He's a He's high up in the, in the hierarchy of the Jewish religion. And now Jesus <clears throat> is telling him something that he never knew. Because he said, how can you be a, a master of Israel and not know these things? And Jesus told him, said, ye must be born again. In our life, we need to realize that everything dies. There's a time to be born, and there's a time to die. And I knew this little fellow one time, and, and he was a great guy, and he passed away. And his family missed him so much. And he was a good friend of mine. And I spent a lot of time with him as he was going through some of the problems that he was going through. But we have to realize that even though I prayed for him and I stood for him and, and I did everything that I could for him, he still passed away. I remember Oral Roberts one time, and he was a big pastor that used to pray for people, and they would uh, be in the lines as long as a football field to get prayed for to receive healing. And there's a reporter came up to him one time and said, Oral, said, I happen to know that one of the people that you prayed for in your service died. Or Robert said, I want you to know that everybody that I pray for in my service will die eventually. Amen. There's a time to be born, 
there's a time to die. But Jesus said, you must be born again. You must be, must be born again. Hallelujah. And to God be the glory. Amen. Father, we just thank you and praise you for another wonderful day. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. You're just a great and wonderful and glorious God. And we just give you praise again for this beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, for the healing.